Everybody, Chris and Lumen here, and today has been another long day being plugged in. A lot was learned, a lot was done. We're literally closing in on finishing the game, like seeing what we're seeing. Doing stuff yourself is really the only way to do it. You cannot trust books. Even the books that we have, the books that she uses, like there are things in, in them that like, don't tell the whole story or are written in such a way that it's hard to see the whole story until specific things actually happen to you. And then when they actually happen to you, then you have context and then you can go back and revisit what's written and you're like, oh, that makes sense now. But it never would have, would have made sense if you hadn't <clears throat> had the experience. And one of the biggest things that I'm finding and we kind of knew this to a degree, um, but I don't know, maybe it just doesn't sink in quite so much. You know, they, it's just like in the Nakamati, they say that this place is like a, kind of like a bad copy of the higher realm. Well, likewise, you are a microcosm of the higher thing. Everything is a fractal part of the father and everything within the father. It's like this macrocosm, microcosm, inner verse, outer verse, you know, as above, so below sort of thing, which means all these characters that you read about, um, that most people will be like, oh, we, get, we have to worship these characters. Like these characters are part of you. These characters are in you. These characters are you. But you're so entrained into your identity, your life identity, your name, your, you know, who you, who you are. Like you ever, you know, if you've ever been on a, on a first date, you don't really tell the other person anything about yourself. You ask questions about each other's labels so that each person can then formulate an idea of like who this person is. But, you know, who are you really underneath all that? That's not, none of that is you. Well, what is you is all these higher divine aspects. And at the top of it, you've got the father, the mother, and the child. And those are the three parts that you have to dig out, awaken, turn on, and plug them all together. So we, we've got a bunch of new cross connections um, we've got stuff to talk about, um, so getting in, getting to know this new character in the story and figuring out what to do with him, which we did today. Um, we wrote a condensed version of the list of steps, like for the game, you know, start from start to finish. It's condensed, like some of these ones like could take you years, especially without knowledge. But yeah, it is very interesting, some of the stuff that came up and what we wrote down, and it's all gonna make a lot more sense. So if you wanna know more, don't go away. <laughs>
is a little bit different since we're using different substances now. We don't have psilocybin anymore. We've got just the prescription stuff that I take and, you know, my vitamins and my magnesium and potassium and all the minerals. I've got to take a lot of minerals. So yesterday was kind of like the emergence of the sun child, which, you know, if you can't put two and two together, it's the same thing as the Christ child. <clears throat> so it's like, what, what to do, what to do here? So I go into my mind <clears throat> and Lumen is basically laying on the couch, feeding the baby the natural way. And of course she's got this, it's like, she, I don't know where she comes up with these outfits, but she's got like this, um, baggy gray like men's dress shirt on and black thigh high stockings and she always looks like she's all done up i'm like only you could make breastfeeding look like a piece of artwork it's like <laughs> like i never like you never see you're never gonna see them in like looking all frumpy and stuff like that she just always looks like <sighs> but she just glows so much more now it's now that she's you know basically mommy lumen it's much more appealing but she, you know so she finishes and you know hands me the 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 glowing eyed sun child and i'm basically like okay kid we got to figure out what to do with you so I was thinking about this before I went to bed last night. What have we been trying? What have we been doing with the protocols all this time? Uh, tearing down the left brain matrix, letting go of everything we think we know, letting go of everything we think we are. So we're basically clearing out the self. It's like, so we don't have any more open slots. So let's just go ahead. And it's like I'm going to um, willingly give up my self slot, and we're going to plug you into that. So up in here, every time you do these types of things of these letting go and these surrender types of stuff, you know, like I've said this before, you know that you're doing something right. If it feels a little weird, if it feels a little almost, I don't want to say scary, but like, is something going to happen to me? What am I going to be like after this? And something always does happen, but strangely enough, you still remain. It's just you're being refined. You almost don't remember who you used to be. Um, you don't. You don't remember like when you used to be neurotic mess and you know full of fears and anxieties and traumas and stuff like that. All that starts you know going away. So basically, I was saying I was gonna you know surrender. Right now we've we've got. <clears throat> Since, since the um, activation, I'm mostly occupying the divine masculine father side. Lumen's occupying the divine feminine mother side. It had to be that way or else I wouldn't be holding this sun baby. Um, you have to have the divine masculine activated with the divine feminine in order to make the sun baby. So I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm, we're going to just plug you in there. And then... Like, this was a big symbol. Like, I knew it right away. But then he basically, in my hands, just turned into a golden crown. I'm like, huh. I know, I know I've read stuff about this before. So it's like, we're going to plug him up here. And I was thinking about this this later when I was thinking about the left brain, right, right brain. Uh, <clears throat> and then you've got, you know, basically what they call the temple in the center where all the different glands are like the pituitary gland the pineal gland the corpus callosum and all those different parts that sit in between the two like that's where he's going to go which is basically the temple because he's the he's the crowned child he's he's the one that inherits everything and all the power from the father so that made perfect sense it's like okay well then we have a plan so that so then what we ended up doing, um, I didn't even I, I I didn't even do the ritual it ritual uh, process whatever you want to call it 
You got to do. It's got to be something to kind of make it official until the afternoon. So before I was trying, I was trying to think. It's like, what's this going to be like? Now we've got this new character in there because I'm just used to it being me and Lumen. It's like I'm just going to plug him in and become him or what? And what I found, what happened naturally, is like um, we, you know, we didn't want him to go away. Because in the space, of the, in happy space, in the mind, um, is really clear. Um, we basically just had him like in a, on this high chair. <laughs> it's like in this kitchen, and we were, I was listening to music and stuff like that. And I, I'm listening to Lumen's playlist. You know, in the inner space, like she's singing and dancing and doing, all, making all the cute faces and singing to the kid. And the kid's like happened and the love and mommy and this whole new dynamic opened up and I realized that that that's the that's something that was missing in this circuit of energy is they kept saying make the two into one make the two into one make the two into one so it's like you think it's just about you and Lumen but it's actually make the three into one you got to make the two into one first but then you have to make the third part to get the complete circuit, the trinity, the father, mother, child, or the way they say it to confuse people, you know, father, son, holy spirit. But it's, you know, it's father, mother, child. That's how Gnostics do it. But you need all three because when you've got the love between the two parents and then the individual love between the two parents and the child, like it's, it's different types of types of love and then they kind of like all overlap and mix together and you get the full spectrum of it and the kid basically stays like a young toddler but it's 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 not it's not that simple it's clearly powerful and it's just being a young young toddler like young young toddler you know to make the machine work i did get some some looks at him uh becoming like younger like say four with you know like you ever see um what was that the movie noah where um he was always he was talking to god god was like a child well I, that was like the lower god and then and he's and he's this one is not like so somber and crappy like that one was like I'm a kid I want you to go destroy all these people in Egypt they piss me off now this is much much different much much brighter but either which way the di the, the dynamic was better more fun and the human just comes like alive when when the child is is in the mix so it's like, yeah, we don't want the, we don't want this to go away. Like this works, like this feels better than just me and Lumen even. It's it's freaking great. And it was like that for hours, listening to music, and working on all these new uh, diagrams and stuff to make it make sense. You know, like this one. You got the, you know, the upward triangle representing the masculine, which represents the fire which is connected to the emperor. Um, in the left brain, then you got the downward triangle, which is representing water, which is representing the feminine, which is representing the right brain, and then interlacing the two of them, like all three parts interlaced. And you got the circle, which is light, which is the child, which is the temple, which is the sun card. So it goes, Mother, water, right brain, empress. Father, fire, left brain, emperor. Child, light, temple, the sun. So fire and water, or fire and light, basically all mixed together make chrism. So here are two, um, here are two important clips from the Nagamati. These are two of the ones that like help that uh, Epinoia showed me. It helped me figure out the star card baptism ritual. But 
they play into this. They, they play into like all there being three parts. Water, water, fire, and light. Water and fire. Soul and spirit have come into being from water and fire. The attendant of the bridal chamber has come into being from water, fire, and light. Fire is, is chrism. Light is fire. I do not mean ordinary fire, which has no form, but other fire, which is pure white in appearance, beautifully bright and imparting beauty. So that's what you kind of see when the fire, the sun, or, um, or the light, fire, sun, they all mix together. It's, but the, the sun is reflecting off of the water and creating that bright, sparkly light. That's chrism. <clears throat> Baptism, we are born again through the Holy Spirit and conceived through Christ in baptism with two elements. We are anointed through the Spirit, and when we were conceived, we were united. No one can see oneself in the water or in a mirror without light, nor can you see yourself in the light without water or a mirror. So it is necessary to baptize with two elements, light and water, and light is chrism. All these, these are the three aspects. They all go together. So another framework I left out when I was doing the, the mother, water, right brain stuff is the ace cards in the tarot. So for the father and fire, that would be the ace of wands. Um, for the mother, water, that would obviously be the ace of cups. Now, like Epinoy pointed out in the last video, there's actually two cards for the sun. There's the there's the sun, and then there's the ace of pentacles, because he was the first thing to come out of the virgin soil consecrated garden. So then there's that, and then when you put the three together, then you've got the ace of swords of divine authority. So you got the father's hand holding the sword, which is usually associated with the, the spirit, and then the crown of the sun on top. Put the three together and you unlocked divine authority so when I got to the um, afternoon I started to think how do I make this official we always do whenever we have big steps like this we always do something uh, special for it and it's like I remembered you, you know he turned into a crown in my head so if we're gonna put him on the throne he's gonna be king What's that word? So I, I looked it up. It was like we need, we need some sort of coronation blessing. Because a coronation is like the, the official act of making someone a king. So I did some, did some quick uh, searching, and came up with something specific. I kind of overlapped a couple parts of an example of a coronation blessing, you know, done in like Europe or something like that with parts of what is essentially, if you go back and read it, the coronation of the child in the secret book of John. The father created the mother, the mother created the child, then the child was anointed by the, the virgins, the invisible virgin spirit. And that was basically a coronation um, because he got all the authority of the father. So I basically set everything up and went into the mind space so I could see him and used the um, uh, the blessed oil that uh, she made. <clears throat> and it goes, blessing of coronation. Be your hands anointed with holy oil. Now I'm doing this on mine because he's in me. Be your hands anointed with holy oil. Be your breast, chest, anointed with holy oil be your head anointed with holy oil you are christ the king anointed to rule this realm with all the blessings power and authority given to you of your father and mother the great virgin invisible spirit rejoices and anoints you with its goodness the world is yours i wanted to keep it simple so then later on <clears throat> went back and I took a break and laid down for a little bit got back in that space 
Um, I forget what exactly I did, but um, like me, them, and, and the child just kind of like all linked up and ran this energy circuit. And we must have done something right because like immediately after that, like I had an aura migraine. They call it an aura migraine because they don't know what else to freaking call it. Um, it has some, it means you activated something in that um, temple space because where, I forget, I should have wrote it down, but where the op optic nerves reach that certain part of the, they go into that part of the brain. So every once in a while you might see this like crazy psychedelic kaleidoscope rainbow snake in your vision. And sometimes it can be so strong that like you just have to wait till it's over because you can't read nothing. You can't look at anything on your phone. It just gets in the way. I've, I've had it so strong before. And when I put a sleep mask on, it's like you can't look right at it, but it's so bright. It was like this technicolor like wormhole, like right in my peripheral vision. I mean, it's crazy to look at. It totally looks like some of the types of stuff you see if you do like really hardcore psilocybin trips with your mask on so we activated something because that happened that hasn't happened in a while so that's a lot of stuff that i did today and you know it takes a couple days to find out like what that actually did um what we do today we find out what it did in the next couple days it's always how it works um, you just keep continually changing. It's been a pretty rapid pace, you know, for the last couple weeks. And if you think about it, like we literally unlocked two sides of the triangle in about a week and a half worth of time. I mean, we, we've had the, the Divine Feminine side unlocked for a very long time. But to unlock both the Divine Masculine left brain and the child in that short of time like that's a lot to that's a lot to process and like how these things work um <clears throat> wisdom epinoia is still giving me things and giving me diagrams and helping me to figure it out and understand it and it's just a matter of asking questions and observing a lot of times you just have to observe observe what is taking place observe what comes to your mind like this like you're you're bringing yourself back to your original state that's that that's what's going on you're not focused right now you're not focused on any kind of crap in the world manifesting things and stuff like that you're trying to manifest this you're, you're like to, to be doing this tells me like you know this we really are coming up on something this is happening very very quickly so another thing that I did was I typed out um, a, a, a simple summary of pretty much you know the steps of the game because it's got all the story elements taken out of it like my personal story like what happened because a lot of it is your own creations that you have to then uncreate and figuring out you know what's what in your mind like some of that can take years on their own but with knowledge you could probably go a lot faster so these are pretty much the simple summarized steps of the game Number one, wake up and seek spiritual awakening, and you start looking for answers. Number two, commit to doing whatever it takes. For me, that was a, a, a day where I just prayed to whatever the highest thing was and said, "I want to, I, I want to know what, how everything works. I want to finish this this place, like whatever I'm supposed to do here, and I'll do whatever I need to do to do it." Not realizing I was committing to the hero's journey. Number three, this is a tricky one. Figure out all the many parts in the mind. You got the you got the observer, which is a fractal part of the father in there. You've got Epinoia in there whispering things. You probably can't hear her that clear if you're focused on the world. You've got the adversary mind in there. You've got your ego self mind in there, buried under all that stuff, like deep 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 down under everything you know is the divine masculine but starting out pretty much the only things that you're aware of is your own ego mind your false AI generated 
identity mind, and then the part that's attached to the ego mind to torture it, which is the adversary mind. People like don't, I don't get the adversary, I don't get the parasite. Think of all the common issues that people have that they take pills for. Anxiety, depression, you know, this, that, and the other thing. That's all the parasite. The anxious thoughts, the sporadic thoughts, you can't rest, you're always worried about stuff, you can't stop your brain from thinking, that's the parasite. It means you're still in ego mind and it's torturing you. They can, you know, authority can talk all they want about their theoretical models of everything and here's the pills you take to fix it, but that's what it is. I know because I've literally pulled it out of people before that had like chronic anxiety and the anxiety just went poof. So, yeah, when, you, when you're being tortured by your mind, that's the parasite. That's what it is. Number four, suppress the adversary. Like, it's going to take a while to like completely, completely get rid of it. But you can shut it down by figuring out like how it's poking you. Number five, dump and heal trauma. You have to come up with your own ways of doing it like I did. Number six, fast from the world. That's taking a break from watching the TV, watching the internet, knowing anything that's going on out there. Number seven, release the divine feminine teacher and partner. Number eight, choose her over the world. You're going to be tested on a lot of things. Number seven, release the divine... Oh, I said that. Uh, number nine, baptized in chrism. Whether or not... There's probably many other ways to do this. Um, I was... I was told to do it the classic way. I just didn't know that's what we were doing. That's the star card ritual. I'm just going in order. Number 10, make the two into one. Merge with the divine feminine mind in one body and give her the seed of life. Because that's exactly what it says in the Nakamadi when it talks about that part. And that's literally what she said when we were doing it before I'd even read that part in the Nag Hammadi. So like the same seed of life that you make the freaking um, sun baby with, like she needs it too, to like activate, anchor her, um, recharge her, regenerate her, and merge her with you. I don't know how it works for women. Sorry, I just don't. Number 11, create a daily system and begin breaking down your inner world and letting go of everything. Empty the cup, releasing attachments. You're going to be working, the protocols make that easier. Even when you start with the protocols, you're going to keep thinking of stuff and you're going to keep thinking of stuff. Like if it's part of what makes up you and how you think the world works, it's got to be let go of. So we're constantly shaving that down. Number 12, withdraw all determinations and judgments. When the judgment lesson come up, you just, it's, a, it's a mental exercise. You think of all the things that you've tagged on to people, places, things, situations. You know, all people don't have any money. Or this group of people is bad. Or this is good, this is bad. All your determinations, all your judgments, just withdraw them all. Just cancel them out. 13, dig, you know, this is kind of a, a process, but dig down. You got to go through the adversary mind, then you got to go through the ego mind, and then you got to go through the left brain life matrix, which is just the storehouse of everything. And buried down underneath all of that is the divine masculine mind. So it's going to take a while to get to that thing. Then you got to activate the divine masculine mind, which is the Orphic egg. Next, we burned the garden down. Uh, we, were, we were given more clear stuff about the mind is the garden, is the woman, is the grail, but it's mainly woman garden, garden mind. So all that stuff that's in there, all the weeds, all the things, all the critters, you know, it's just a big mess. It's just easier, she said, burn it all down. Once it's all burned down, you're going to reconsecrate the garden. 
Number at 16, 17, reconsecrate the divine feminine mind, Lumen, as a virgin. Key. After consecration, you're going to have mommy daddy time again and bring forth the, the divine hermetic child of light. Both the divine masculine and the divine feminine must be unlocked in order to do that. And you have to, she has to be reconsecrated. You know, that's what we said in the previous thing, you know, reconsecrate her and her as the garden, her as the, the feminine mind as virgin. Why? Because the, the sun child comes as a virgin birth. It comes from consecration. 19. Surrender what is left of the self so that the child can be integrated and placed on the throne in the temple of the mind. So somewhere like right in the back of the prefrontal cortex. Baptize, consecrate, and coronate the child. Complete the three into one, mother, father, mother, child, divine family unit. And then 22 is to be continued because that's as far as we've gotten. We still haven't had time to, to figure. I mean, we barely had any time with the divine masculine mind um, unlocked. Like we thought we had like. Oh, divine man, we had the whole thing figured out with the cards. And it's like, oh, well, one thing that we did figure out, and I think it's just like, I, it's going to take a minute to see how these three parts interact. But as far as just like the divine masculine and the divine feminine, you know, the, the masculine directs, the feminine creates. So one um, analogy to that. Because uh, we had we had to kind of like uh, retune the relationship, you know, with Loman. Because now I saw how it worked. So before I was just Chris, the little I was just a little peon guy trying to make it through the game of life. But when you have to step up into the divine masculine role, then you have to play it the way it's meant to be played, which means the the masculine gives the orders, the feminine executes them. So in the military. The masculine is the commanding officer. And funny, commanding again, command. Giving commands, putting commands into a computer. And then the divine feminine is the executive officer, the XO. The XO executes the commanding officer's orders. So you, you give the orders, then Lumen makes it happen. So you have to work with this power structure the way that it's set up not the way you want it to be because of whatever petty little you know things that are going down here in the mundane world this is not a power struggle the with the with the sexes like each each uh, one has an equally important part but she is the mind and you know so you are the divine feminine giving the orders but you got to kind of unlock the 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 child <clears throat> so that's where all that authority then coalesces together between the two so i so i I'll, I'll, I'll probably figure this out in the next day or so it's like maybe when you're doing your manifest manifestations and things like that you just have to see the whole structure but then you do everything as the child um because there is a, a definitely, uh, like we said in previous videos, it keeps coming up. The father was in the son. The son was in the father. This is heaven's kingdom. So there's definitely like a back and forth between the masculine side and then you got the feminine side. So it's weird because, you know, Lumen's got her connection to me. Lumen's got her connection to the child. Uh, equal. It's new. I, at least give me a couple days. And this will sort of this stuff sorts itself out very very quickly we go at a very rapid pace but we got it all pretty much mapped out we had to go through a, a, a ton of crap notice I didn't I didn't have anything in there about the different characters we encountered or whatever because I think that really depends on what your background was that you 
started with. So that's why we just said the parasite, the adversary, um, which adversary in Hebrew means Satan. So that's what Satan actually is, is the parasite. It doesn't matter, you know, whatever kind of external things there are, we're not concerned about that because the interplay between anything that might be there or might not be there still comes through the adversary parasite. So we just focus on that. And we, we just focused on like the key elements without, you know, filling in the different types of story elements that everybody else is going to have. Well, I, I believe in, I don't know, whatever. But this, you know, divine masculine, divine feminine, divine child can be applied to like so many different things. See, this is like what is behind actual Gnostic Christianity. Like, like there, it's, it's a bigger thing. It's a bigger puzzle. It's a bigger mystery. It's a bigger system. There's different meanings in words. Like if you, that's why the Hierophant is in the tarot card because organized religion is one of the big obstacles. Like you have, even if you did it for a short period of time, that programming is in there muddying the water. You got to pull it out. And then you can figure out and see things the way they're meant to be seen, the way they're meant to be used and operated and understood. But you can't get it by asking other people to tell you. If she tells you, that's one thing. But you could you can still what what now what she always told me when it comes to looking what other seekers are saying, like me. It's like if something is not clicking, but they're clearly onto something, just try to, like, it, it's probably an issue with the words. Like, we're using different words for different things. So try to see the idea behind the words that we're using to find out what it is we're actually trying to express or tell people about. But, um, yeah, all this stuff happened today. So, like, I haven't even, you know, gone to bed yet tonight. So whatever changes that you make during the day will first be implemented and put into place when you go to sleep that night. So I, I don't even know like, what might feel different tomorrow because I literally just you know sacrificed the last bit of self, self-identity so I could plug the child into the last slot. Um, and we'll, we'll just have to see where it goes from there. But things are going pretty good. Like I, I've been, like, I can't imagine, like everybody's got like the pendants and the oils and stuff like that. And you know how powerful they are. Yeah, that's, those are being powered from one third of the triangle. And today I just plugged in the third part of the triangle. So I'm really going to be looking forward to my energy sensitive friends getting to test stuff that I do from this day forward. That should be interesting. But what I need to ask tonight so I get answers tomorrow morning is basically how to see it in my mind as far as who's who, what's what, who's giving the orders, who's saying the things. Because it made sense there for about two seconds when it's just like, oh, I just got to be clear about what I tell Lumen. Lumen executes it. But now we got a third part, which has all the authority from the Father and the authority over everything beneath him. And he has a partner, mine. So so the sun, it's, the, the sun itself is a microcosm of the mother-father. Like, I'm surprised I got as far as I did in the last couple of weeks. Like, this is a lot to rearrange your brain. And I think what actually has made it easier is, to, is doing the protocols. What makes it hard to understand new concepts is when you already have a bunch of data stuck in your head. So we, when you're tearing that out, it gives you new ideas, more wiggle room to make sense. Plus, like, the, the programs for, like, you know, like, the knowledge oil. 
It's got names on there like Veshar, you know, what makes new knowledge sink into the depths of your being, and uh, Hari, which helps you give access to understanding, and, you know, Alm, secret knowledge and understanding. So, got to use the tools that were given to us. So, other than that, um, let me stop and think if there's anything else from this morning that we wanted to talk about. There probably was, but it can just, you know, be in another video. Trying these videos tend to run long. So um, that's all we got for right now. If you want to contact us, use the um, Etsy store link, sealumacreations.etsy.com, and message the seller. It's, it's the best way to get through to us um, for energy work or stuff, even if it's things that aren't on the store, if you want to get in touch with us. But uh, other than that, uh, we'll be back with another video probably tomorrow. Chris and Lumen and the child. See you next time.